What's up? It's your boy Carcino here. And let's get into it. You know the Patreons. Y'all get to see it first. Now. <clears throat> let's get it all clear. Let's get it all clear. And done. Right here. Because I feel that's the proper way to get things done. Now, when we looking at and we talk about some of the best times in the music era, I would say the 80s and the 90s were probably the best for like hip hop music and things of that nature. Now, hip hop has been watered down, controlled. Uh, mimic, destroy, whatever you want to call it. That's what's happened to hip hop. Now, let's get into the 50 Cent issue, basically. It's an issue. With Lil Wayne. 50 Cent was a giant in the industry who always seem to have controversy surrounded about his albums. The Ja Rule situation for the first album was the big controversy, the blackballing, and he was against the grain, he's fighting the system. That's what it seemed to be and appear when he was going up against Ja and the, you know, the majors. So people was rooting for him, he was the underdog. By the second album, he was looking more like the bully. So on the Massacre album, he once again was involved with a lot of situations with Nas, uh, Jada Kiss, and the Locks, and a host of other artists. So when the second album comes out, that was the controversy around there. He even had a problem with Vivica Fox, who he was dating during the album. Now, when all of this transpired is over, you start to move and rotate, and you start to see trends, you start to see situations rear its head or change directions and move in a way that it shouldn't be moving. So now you start to see other things happen that shouldn't be happening. You start seeing, um, uh, what was that? It was a certain play, but it was a big rollout at that time where Aftermath and Interscope Records was ruling. And just like a snap of the finger, out of nowhere, through this whole time, Eminem was going through a period of adjustment. You know, Proof was gone and Eminem had gained weight. He was not really in the mix anymore. 50 Cent was pretty much the anchor of the ship. As D12 had pretty much just become going stuck in a mud at that point. Um, it was a moot point. Little Wayne came like a just a spirit of of energy, a bolt of lightning that came out of nowhere and just took over. And he did it from the mixtape scene, similar to 50 Cent, because it was like, man, Lil Wayne mixtapes is, man, that stuff's incredible. Lil Wayne mixtape, Lil Wayne mixtapes. So Lil Wayne mixtapes was something, but he had yet to put out an album. He was killing features. And was doing mixtapes because he was making more money on mixtapes than he was on his albums. So that's why he was like, why well, make an album? After dropping the card of one, he was doing a bunch of mixtapes. And it was the new sound of Lil Wayne that made him more East Coast flow and everything. So Wayne became the new wave. The braids, the dreads rather. 
that whole the cup, the syrup, the lean from New Orleans, and that's all he's talking about, and that led to the syrup era. So 50 Cent saw this rise that was happening with Wayne, so he had to meet that right away and be against it like he was with Kanye West. When he had his third album, the whole promotional thing with him and Kanye, he was very successful. He wanted to do that with his new album, Before I Self-Destruct. So when he was going to do that project, he was getting ready to use that for the promotion. He had a motion picture that he had filmed and produced him basically himself. And it was supposed to come out coinciding with the um, actual with the actual uh, CD, which was really going to be the soundtrack for the motion picture. Now, looking at this film, you got to start asking yourself questions looking at this film as to say, man, like, what happened here? You know, like, this is not making a lot of sense for people. Why is, you know, the reception is different? And it was. It was. The reception was a lot different at that time. Because Interscope was going through changes. Um, Jimmy Iovine and 50 Cent didn't kind of like each other. So that was hurting the Eminem, Dr. Dre relationship with 50. And he's like, look. Fifth is still out here, you know, he's making stuff and I got a new album coming out. I'm trying to come back, you know, from the abyss because I wasn't, Eminem wasn't going to rap again for a while. And then he had to get back to work because he has all the artists he put out there wasn't really doing anything. So... Shady Aftermath was taking losses. You know, they weren't putting out projects. Uh, Eminem was in shambles and everything falls on him. So while that was the case, the main problem that remained was the fact that they had to find a way to keep things relevant or afloat, in other words, while all of this was transpiring. So Lil Wayne came in when there was a void. And took over the entire wave. See the promotion that they had. That was going on was the fact that Oprah had basically pinned herself against hip hop. So 50 Cent who had done an interview with Gail basically. After they patched things up, Eminem, I mean, 50 Cent was basically angry at Oprah. So he did the play this on a radio song where he basically was dissing Lil Wayne. And that was going to be the come out song because they were getting ready to do a three album launch. And they was going to do the promotional tour called the Three Head Monster. Where Eminem's album was going to come out, then 50 Cent's album, and then Dr. Dre's album. And they were going to take over the entire year. And that was going to be called the Three-Headed Monster. And they was going to do a tour titled the Three-Headed Monster Tour. And Lil Wayne was the target. So, for Eminem was going to diss Lil Wayne also. Right along with Kanye West, he had rhymes that he had did. He had actually done a freestyle where he was dissing Kanye and Lil Wayne. That was actually a rhyme he had wrote. Because he was part of this, mo this movement, this wave. They were going to go and battle the new generation. Eminem was going to go against that. But, J. 
Jimmy Iovine said, I don't think that's a good idea for you, M. That's 50's way. I'm going to need you to try to do a song with Kanye West and a song with Lil Wayne. <laughs> so if, the, if Lil Wayne impact was so big that they would have said that would torpedo Eminem. So Jimmy Iovine pulled Eminem away from the project and kind of left 50 Cent out there on his own. So now 50, not only is M coming with his album, but he's buddy buddy now with Lil Wayne. Because Eminem at that point had fallen off. He was just coming off one of his worst albums ever. So he's trying to get back into the fold of being respected. He let go of the blonde hair and the blue eyes, and now he's with the short black hair, and he's not doing the gimmicks no more. He's not afraid to be himself no more. He's going to take the chance and walk the road not being the blonde no more. So now he's back being him. So now, when they do all of these new things, um, promotion, this is already in motion. 50 Cent has basically produced his entire album with no help from Interscope. Because Interscope was bootlegging his album. He felt like there was a leak somewhere. He didn't know where it was coming from, so he recorded this whole album basically in one location, which was his home. So he knew no one had his album, so it couldn't get leaked. So when he's, the album is sent in for mixing and mastering, because the people that was normally at the Interscope office to, like, that normally waited on him hand and foot, you know, they got him waiting in the lobby. They're not getting back in contact with him when they should. Things are different. Everything's changed from when he was the main focus. Now Interscope is working on new artists. Eminem and, you know, is back in the fold. So the whole three-headed monster project is like, okay, well, are we still doing that and gearing up for the tour? That's all on hold. Because Jimmy Iovine is pissed mad at 50 Cent over this headphone thing. With the Beats headphones. So now, even though Dr. Dre, who has a percentage in 50 Cent, because, you know, he's still under Interscope, Dre's going to produce a couple of songs on the album just to get his points off. And then after that, gonna look at all the things that happen in between where 50 is like you guys torpedoed my career because I had to deal with game y'all dumped him on me and I get the car to move out the mud and then I'm the one taking shrapnel from him and y'all didn't even shut that down y'all let it happen and he's torpedoing me so it's like if you feel like he, this guy's more valuable, y'all should have moved on with him. But now this is affecting business in my rollout plans. Because Dr. Dre didn't even release Detox. So the album that was supposed to come out that was Detox for the Three-Headed Monster Tour, and it was going to be uh, Dre, I mean Eminem, 50, then Dre, And then the tour, and that's mega money that didn't happen because Dre didn't put out Detox. 
Now, Detox was coming out. It was on its way. From special press delivery. And it didn't drop. And the reason it didn't drop was the most silliest reason of all. Because some of the songs that Dre, Dre did, he let people hear them and they stole them. They weren't finished by Dre's uh, estimations. But it was like six, seven songs. And they got leaked out on there all over the internet. Like, this is the new Dr. Dre detox album. He got pissed and was like, man, all this work I put in, I'm out. So now, he don't want to do detox no more. He don't want to start all over. So, that scrapped. <laughs> so, 50 was just stuck out there like, what the hell? M is buddy with Lil Wayne. I'm still dissing Lil Wayne. <laughs> now I look crazy. So the songs was out there, but he never really pursued it anymore because it was like, I'm against this. This is drug addict rap. You know, I don't I don't do that. When we got a junkie being the, the king of hip hop. Junkie rap. So that was his campaign in a march, and Lil Wayne didn't want to, you know, go as far as they did. You know, he did the Louisiana animal thing, talking about eating organs. I put syrup in your vitamin water. <laughs> And whatever Lil Wayne said at that time, everybody thought of as golden. He had the entire hip-hop world under his thumb. And that was that. You could not fight that energy. So when Lil Wayne and Eminem do a song together, Wayne does drop the world. And all he's doing is trying to build himself back up, Eminem, by attaching himself to all these guys. Cause I'm gone. <laughs> so Drop the World comes out on the Lil Wayne album and everything. And and everybody's like, man, Eminem, man, he still can flow. You know, he's trying to get back into the groove. And get back into his zone. But he using all the hot artists, Kanye's and the Lil Wayne's, the artists he couldn't stand to actually sit there and listen to. And now he's changed script. And that was good for him because that wouldn't have went well for him. <laughs> you were not going to touch Lil Wayne at that time. Wayne would have had to do something wrong. He had taken over the whole ship. And that's, that was a hard energy to battle. So, Internal Wars was keeping 50 Cent from completing the mission and everybody else internally and 50 found out that the mastering company that was in Germany was actually the company that was bootlegging the uh, CD and that's when he said I'm done with Interscope I'm done period and that's why he left the um, he left the label after that that was his last Last thing he did with Interscope, they bought him out his contract. He got an early buyout, and he was released because he's not going to keep creating his music and having his music bootleg. See, what was happening was that Interscope, when it was happening at the mastering facility, that's why these copies was on the street, streets and was mastered. They were getting paid under, the, like, double bubble. They were bootlegging their own material and putting it out on the streets, getting the streets money, having a master copy floating around on the streets. Then they were using that to devalue their talent 
So when you try to renegotiate, it devalues you when they saying, well, your album didn't do as much as it would have done because it was bootlegged and this and that. And, you know, it does hurt your sales. We can't really add those street sales because we don't really know what those numbers are. When the bootlegging was happening from the company. So when you see these things come into play, they're de they're literally devaluing devaluing you because your asking price is going to be way heavy. See, they make you stars and then they try to sabotage you at the end when it's time for your contract to be renegotiated. They say, "Oh well, you're falling off. Yeah, you started off hot, but now you're fading." <laughs> they don't want your numbers to be up there. So they were even doing that to Eminem. When it was time for Eminem to reel, they were, oh, look at your album sales. They're dropping. Because he was getting ready to re-up. So if they'll bootleg their own number one artist in Eminem, an artist in which they didn't want, but ended up with, and now he's the biggest thing in the world, let's devalue him a little bit. Then they realize it's better to keep this guy on the label because he's the only thing that's going to bring in more money and revenue. We can cross him over into everything else. Ta da Like Roger Rabbit. <laughs> bank, 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 bank. If 50 would have embraced Lil Wayne and did a song with Wayne, that would have been epic for 50 Cent at that time. The 50 wasn't in his right mind when it came to that. He had a they had a layout for that to try to, you know, to be against that type of rap. Where now 50 is more, you know, accepting of these these newer generation Lil Wayne's and all of those type of guys were back in the day he would have been dissing these guys but now you see him doing songs with these guys you know NLE Chopper and 50 Cent would have never done a song back in 2007 <laughs> you know if that was back then no he'd have been dissing him and everybody else that sounded like him but anyway thanks for your time you know Looking, listen to the banner and everything down there you could do. The Patreon is all there. But I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to roll. I got you.